Welcome everyone to another edition of Cello Connect. I am Pete Romney coming from St. George and during today's Cello Connect we're going to talk to the inimitable, the one and only Dr. Kawhi Yu. Kawhi, how are you doing today? Thanks for inviting me here. So honored to be joining you. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. So Kawhi, you and I go, go back a little ways. Uh, you know, we're stand partners for the Southwest Symphony Orchestra. And uh, we do a few things together every year, including working with um, the Cello Society of Southern Utah, and then our own little quartet, the Acheso Cello Quartet. That's where right. we play just wherever we can, <laughs> yep. which is a lot of fun. It's so, yes, thank you for being here. This is, this is going to be a lot of fun. So uh, why don't we start off by, um, if you could just tell us a little bit about your cello background. What first got you into playing the cello? Yeah, that's, it's an interesting story. My, I grew up in a musical family. My mother is actually a vocalist um, and also play the piano and teach, teach music. Uh, my um, brothers all play instruments. My father, even though he, he was a professor um, in science, um, he also played the piano to uh, accompany my mom singing. Mm. And so naturally I was, uh, you know, trying to, my, my parents want to pick an instrument for me. But, but um, that was actually interesting story about um, my family uh, who stayed, we, we stayed in Europe for actually a short moment in Paris. Mm. My father has a, has a job there and um, and they and I, I was two years old like and and my mom started to worry about me because I couldn't speak like I well I'm not couldn't speak I I didn't speak and um, it was like they was like oh this child must have some problem or something um, but it turned out that uh, my mom talked to uh, his friend uh, Ming Yun Jung who is who's a cellist uh, from Hong Kong he was studying there and it's like he told he told my mom I said no Kawhi was talking to me all the time, you know, I would just lean on uh, when I saw him, this teacher, and I'll be just listening to him practice and then was really enjoying it. Um, and uh, it turned out that maybe it's because like I was in a new like foreign country and uh, my neighbor was speaking Japanese and English and then everybody else is speaking French, my family is speaking Chinese, so it's like, you know, this kid just get confused. <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> And then this wonderful cellist teacher, oh, this is a big instrument. So I love him, like, like, love, you know, listening to him play. And, and then that's when I start talking and stuff like that. So we talk about when I go back to Hong Kong, then we will um, start cello lessons. And we did. So that's, that's my first cello teacher. Uh, Ming Yun Jung was a um, Hong Kong Philharmonic uh, player. So and uh anyway long long story short and i keep as a, as a kid then i of course i um you know got a little bit rebellious didn't like to practice and um <laughs> you know <laughs> but uh one thing changed me when i was in um middle high school um high school i was invited to play in the orchestra um and i began to um realize that i could be very important. I, I play an important role. I could actually, you know, join other people. And that gave me a purpose to keep playing the cello. And, 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 and I did continue uh, from then on. And, um, and then eventually, you know, current uh, study in college and, and continue my musical studies that way. That's an, an amazing story. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I had no I idea. I always love sharing with people. Um, yeah, it's 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 interesting. Yeah, it's all it's all like yeah. Everybody has a very different story, unique story. Yeah, for sure. Um, so next question, um, and it's just based on what I know of of your musical background. Is you you've spent quite a bit of time uh, studying early classical music, Baroque and, and Renaissance era. Yes. Uh, compositions. Do you want to talk to us just a little bit about that? Yeah. So early music, uh, you know, that didn't, didn't mean that I wake up really early or something. <laughs> <laughs> Although I'm sure you do. 
they used to say some people are just joking like oh yeah you get old and you and you really like early music so you wake up early <laughs> um but um we were trying to look into music um old music from the way from the uh you know lens of um the composer or from the performer back then with a historical <clears throat> context in mind so say if i'm playing a piece by bach or vivaldi from the baroque period i would look at to you well what kind of instrument i would be playing in baroque period in bach's time uh what kind of strings what kind of bow hole or uh what kind of trills or um do i do any vibrato and stuff like that so it's it is actually in a way um it's a new way of looking at, at old music actually when you know the interesting about thing is like you know when you have old things will new things will become old right one day but you know when you look at the old things again new things you know bring it back again it feels new um and so that's just you know just the way of looking in things uh try to look for authenticity mm. basically you know um and and one i will give you some analogies um like food everybody loves food <laughs> you know, um, imagine you are, you know, eating burger with your chopsticks, um, or <laughs> you go to a fancy French restaurant, you know, you probably wouldn't use your bare hands to eat. And that's the thing. Uh, people didn't realize that, well, I was playing box, you know, some people just play box with the vibrato that you'll be playing for Rachmaninoff. Um, and, and it's actually similar in that case, you know, um, you know, you probably would enjoy that um, using that the other playing Bach with the Bach um, context in mind and playing Rachmaninoff with the Rachmaninoff um, style and, you know, the passion, the, the way, the technique that will help you do that better. So it's... Um, it's, it's interesting. It's, it's like a journey look, looking into... Um, and, and we also... Um, through this, we also look at, you know, maybe, you know, possibly manuscripts like uh, Fasimile of the mm. um, uh, composers. Um, so it, it, it allowed you to see more details and look at what's, oh, yeah, this marking is actually not original by, you know, um, Brahms. You know, it could be somebody who edited it, who edited it later. And so... Um, I look at it as more like a discovery, um, curiosity, because music is all about, you know, originality, um, and and it's so easy to think like, oh yeah, you know, you you know, um, some people would say like, yeah, we, we do early music, you must be really stubborn, you really think think of the old way of doing old things, um, and but in in fact, on the other hand, is actually uh, it's a fun project that you try to look. You know, oh yeah, what 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 was the composer thinking, instead mm -hmm. of what I was thinking? Because I'm not well. By the way, I'm you know unless I'm playing my own music, right? Uh, which I I well, I did play some of my own music, but if I'm playing Beethoven's music, why don't I should look at Beethoven's why, um, what kind of music that he was in my, in mind when he wrote it? So, so this is just a just a fun uh, way of looking at things. That's really interesting. So it kind of gives you a peek into the mind of the composer, like yes. writing it. So you can really kind of get to know Bach really well, or Corelli, or you know Vivaldi, or any of these any of these kind of early classical Baroque composers. <clears throat> Do you have a preferred composer from that era? Of uh, from any era, or just like Baroque, or um, I'd say anything. Uh, Baroque or or uh, Renaissance era. I well obviously there are a lot of great composers. Um, I I do love Bach, J. S. Bach, um, and uh, obviously he wrote the cello suites and and the gamma sonatas and a lot of great you know uh, cantatas and you know orchestral music like Brandenburg concertos and, and and a lot of great pieces um, that cello cellists enjoy. Um, but also his his um his legacy that affect like so many composers that I love later like you know Brahms and Schumann or Beethoven that I really enjoy all came from that roots. But 
I also love uh, Marie Marie or Marie Marie, the French mm. composer uh, who wrote for the gamba uh, that I play viola the gamba, um, and it's just very. I like French. The, if you talk about Baroque music, the, the French way, um, interesting, um, like the the taste, the the kind of fine. Um, you know, I wish I could uh, talk to you about. Um, <laughs> We, we, yeah, that could be a great lecture topic, but but um, but the ornaments, the the you know how you you do different ornaments, and ornament, ornamentation. Oh yeah, yeah, and it's it, the French opera and the uh, they they call it notes inegal or uh, unequal rhythm. That actually, like for example, like you look at a piece of music, it will you are going you're supposed to play slightly different from the written rhythm basically swing it yeah it's anyway, okay that's a little too detailed but um yeah a lot anyway so the, and uh handle handles music it's always cosmopolitan and touch on so many different styles so here's a question about bach do you have uh in mind a recording of the box music that you feel really kind of hit the nail on the head like really kind of do a great job of sort of getting into getting into the music as Bach would have heard it? Ultimately, I think playing Bach importantly is to find your own way mm. of interpreting as a performer. But of course, <laughs> as a listener, there are several um, versions that I, editions that I, I, I like quite a lot, like the one by Anna Biusma. Oh, okay. The Dutch cellist. Um, and um, the cellist who came not long ago here for our cello festival, Tanya Tompkins, uh, Peter Peter Wilsbury, another Dutch mm -hmm. cellist, had some very very um, unique interpretation of that. There's some, um, uh, what do I what should I say? Just like very very uh, honest interpretation. Like instead of trying to be, uh, because now nowadays there are a lot of um, performers trying to be like perfection like as their main outcome ma main goal so they try to be very careful you know what i'm saying yeah absolutely um, and then they, they didn't do much exaggerate things or musically even you don't try to shape things as much um they just don't want to get out of two notes or you know scratchy notes but casals wasn't at least at his you know from what i know about him he, he didn't have that problem he just very honest and like this is the way I play and that um, genuine uh, genuinity you know and it's it it go through went through the music but I, I like your Ma um, in one I, at least one of the recordings um, that he'd ex explore Baroque more and then he go back to more modern ways um, interestingly he like he, he like use Bach and collaborate with artists remember it's oh, the inspired by Bach, yeah. Yeah, with like, ninety nine. You know, um, but Anna Busma was the one. You know, if you're talking about Baroque um, cello uh, playing, um, I think Jaap Linden, who I have had a chance to study uh, in one summer, it was was also fantastic in his Bach as well. Um, so, so that those are just some of those recordings that I I. I you know, enjoyed. Uh, what you said a second ago was really interesting about uh, connecting with the composer. You know, I call this series Cello Connect through no design of my own. I think everyone that I've interviewed has talked about using the cello to connect uh, either to other people or to themselves in a new way or, um, you know, things like that. And I think it's really interesting to um, take the time with early pieces of music and try to connect to the composer in, in a really unique way like you're talking about, you know, doing the research and figuring out exactly how they would have heard the music. And it can really deepen your understanding of um, yeah. yeah, that little bit of history. In fact, I think you brought out an important point, like connect to the composer. Um, and that actually could apply to new music as well. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and uh, I, I have been doing new music also, like with living composers. And that 
you would be talking if you were playing a piece by you know Peter Rami. You you will be interviewing him like right now and talk to you. Hey, what would you like to play? Want me to play like the way you play or like, you know?、Uh, and then you will be asking me、oh, what kind of technique you can do if you are not a cellist, you know?、Um, and basically, that's the same idea of trying to you know, except that you know Bach you know could not talk to me right now. <laughs> But, <laughs> Look at things that he left, you know, like his manuscripts or,、uh, you know, his conversation written letters with other composers or, or what the cellist at his time would be doing. So, or I'd love it if you would play something, play something for us. I don't know if you'd want to play it on your regular cello or show us a little bit of history. Yeah, I I actually brought my、um, uh, baroque cello, five string. Uh, violoncello piccolo. Will you will you be interested to look at that? Awesome! That sounds great.、Um, so yeah, this is、uh, violoncello piccolo. That's right. That like like the piccolo, like flute.、Um, so it's the higher,、uh, smaller a little bit, slightly smaller. This is about seven eighth size,、uh, usually seven eighth to three quarter size of a modern、uh, full size cello. That's the that's the largest they would be doing.、Um, The difference from the regular、um, four, four string cello is、uh, with the top E string. So, so then you have that.、Um, yeah, for the, for the audience who who are less familiar with baroque cello, baroque cellos there. By the way, baroque cello is、uh, is not necessarily five string. This is particularly a violoncello, piccolo five string、uh, cello. But a lot of baroque cellos also four string,、um, but several elements you want to know is that、um, you know the fingerboard is shorter. So this is like a big, long,、um, you know, space here, and the、uh, fingerboard here, the neck here is usually thicker.、Mm. Um, obviously,、uh, I'm not using end pin. I was just holding it with my、um, legs and and.、Um, You probably can't see from the screen, but it's the gut strings,、um, and obviously the bow also is a baroque bow, a little bit different. The shape coming down here is instead of so even from the frog to the、um, tip is more、uh, frog heavy.、Mm. So that that kind of、uh, sound, it's you can't sustain as much,、uh, but it's also it cannot project as much. But on the other hand, it's sweet and very、uh, human voice like. Um, so, yeah, it's it's interesting, and and it's but on the other hand, it's actually、uh, it's actually not easier. <laughs> no,、uh, in a way, it's easier in a way that it doesn't have to go all high register. But when you have an extra string, yeah,、uh, it's different with the angle, and you easily hit the、uh, the wrong string.、Mm. Like a D string now has becomes the middle string. Uh huh. Yeah. And it changes the color of the string as well. The A is not as bright. Um, because the E string becomes the brightest string, and and then the low string is go have to go more this way.、Um, you know, it's, but it's um, it's it's, you know, I learn I learn to be flexible、um, about trying that,、um, and I I also play the gamba as you as you mentioned, so it's it's also different. So yeah, it's good to be able to explore. J.S. Bach specifically、um, asked for a five-string instrument、uh, for his cellos with number six, the last one. And、uh, while modern cellists were trying to play it on a four, regular four-string cello, and、um, make it work, and、um, but、uh, but it's it's、um, you know it's 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 refreshing for me to actually play it. On a five-string cello, and a lot of the chords and a lot of the, you know, thing just flow more naturally and without like forcing, like you know, kind of struggling rather than like enjoying dancing or rather than、uh, trying to do another technical study, you know. <laughs> 